Torah TV. The world is thinking. In the first century AD, the Stoic philosopher Epictetus stated, men are disturbed not by things, but by the views which they take. This is the essence of cognitive behavior therapy. I won't argue with the idea that many of our behaviors and emotions, such as anxiety, depression, perhaps alcoholism, and maybe even anger, are influenced by our genetic composition. However, as a cognitive behavioral therapist, I hesitate to stop the train there. Research has shown that although many individuals may have a genetic predisposition towards mental illness, they can be helped significantly with evidence-based treatments, such as cognitive behavior therapy. There can be a danger to the idea of behavior genetics. If interpreted in a distorted way, people can walk around and blame their socially maladaptive behaviors on their genes. <laughs> Sorry, Stuart. I have bad genes. For me, this is much like the days of Freud, when the blame for people's neuroses would then was on cold mommy and distant daddy, and frankly, it scares me. My position is that regardless of one's genetic predispositions, there needs to be accountability for one's actions. Coughing up a behavior or a trait or a condition to purely genes, one implies caus causation, which is next to impossible to prove, and it also abdicates people of responsibility of their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. I'd like to do a quick demonstration with you. I'm going to ask that everybody in the room, <laughs> every, <laughs> he said he liked pain. <laughs> OK. All right. I want everybody in the room to think of a secret that they've never shared with anybody, not even their best friend, something that they're ashamed of. The secret could involve an action you feel ashamed about or perhaps some personal weakness. Continue to think about it, because in a moment, I'm going to walk around and I'm going to point at someone. And that person is going to have to get up in the center of the room and share their secret with the group. So everybody think about this secret. <laughs> Okay, what were some of the feelings you had? I imagine some, obviously this is a demonstration, but if, if you, this were a workshop and you didn't know I was kidding, some would probably have anxiety. Others of you may have anger. And others, oddly, may have been excited about sharing a secret. <laughs> so what were you thinking when you heard that I was going to ask you to share a secret you never shared before? For those of you who felt anxious, you probably were catastrophizing about the idea of getting up in front of people you don't know and sharing something that you're ashamed about. If you were angry, you were probably thinking something like, how dare this woman come in here and ask us to do this? Who does she think she is? And for any of you that were excited, I'll talk to you after this and we can set up an appointment. <laughs> OK, so what's the point of this exercise? It's we largely create how we feel by the things that we tell ourselves. If it were strictly the event that created our feelings, everybody in the room would have experienced the same reaction, which is not the case. So even if some of you have some genetic pull towards, let's say, anxiety, you can change your anxiety by challenging the way you think. We don't have control over our genes, but we do have control over our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. <laughs>